This episode is brought to you by Novilla Mattresses. Are you single but planning on having another person in your bed now that the world is returning to normal? Well, to my knowledge, it is important that your bed isn't uncomfortable. However, you don't want to break the bank in the process of buying a new bed. That's why I sleep on a mattress made by Novilla. Meet their Bliss Organic Memory Foam Mattress, perfect for those who want a cool, dry, undisturbed sleep throughout the night, made with organic bamboo charcoal fiber, excellent motion isolation, cooling gel-infused memory foam, fits all bed frames, and reasonably priced between $179 and $369. Perfect for if you want an inexpensive mattress for you, your children, or even for your guest room. Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% on any purchase through Novella directly. Again, that's 10% off using promo code SHWEEZY. A reminder that when you use our links and promos, you directly support this show. What is going on, my fellow Schwoke Lords? What is up? Welcome to yet another episode of Cancel Shweezy. Folks, today literally is our best episode that we've ever made, Yes, because you know. And I really like that. Uh, I can't imagine that we're going to make any episode that is better uh, before or ever again that we are ever going to make. What is that? Welcome to another WAP uh, WAP standing for wet ass podcast for all the boomers out there who didn't know uh, from the top make a drop this is a wet ass podcast welcome to the show uh, if you didn't already know I am your daddy the the po- your podcast daddy for today uh, Shweezy back at it again bringing you uh, the best episode of Cancel Shweezy that literally we have ever made I can't imagine us making a better episode than the uh, one we are making today. So thank you so much for uh, strolling me up on your computers, your phones, your tablets, your iPads, your Toshiba handy books. Uh, welcome to the show today. It's going to be a good one. Like I said, uh, less than a minute ago, uh, it's, it's going to be our best episode yet, and I can't imagine us uh, not making a good episode today. Um, let's just get into it. So if you didn't know, uh, this is episode 42, uh, uh, which means today on the podcast, we are going to go through the meaning of life. I like that. And uh, do you want to question me? Because Pretty bold of you little fucks to assume that I'm not God. So uh, better just not question me today, folks, on uh, anything I do. Uh, but yep, today we're going to discover the meaning of life on this podcast today. Uh, one thing I do want to say, Ride or Die Volume 2 by me out now, wherever you stream your music at, because I have music out there. Shweezy is not just a cool name, it's the name of an artist, and that artist is uh, it's me. I identify as a fucking threat. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. Ride or Die Volume 2 is the reason why I think it's about a month old. Actually, yeah, it is a month old now. Uh, we also got, uh, I also got Ride or Die Volume 1, which came out last December, and then an EP King, and I got a couple singles. Uh, one's a cover of It's Gonna Be May by NSYNC, uh, which is cool, um, which is cool. Everyone seems to like that. Uh, but nevertheless, you should go check that out. It's really cool. It's a great way to support me. If you you know, you know already have a streaming service, just listen to me nonstop because, and honestly, why don't you just make me the only music you listen to? I should be the only music you listen to. Doesn't that make sense? Uh, be gone, fuck! <laughs> to all the other music, they're all thoughts now, and uh, we need to let them know that they need to be gone. Uh, so go stream my music. You can also watch me play video games. I do play video games every Thursday and sometimes Mondays. Uh, usually it's a Fortnite stream. We may be going into Pokemon Unite. I have not decided yet if we if I can get if I can get a group together. I want to play with a group because by myself it's kind of like. Uh, and I'm still kind of figuring out how to play the game, uh, but that game's been a lot of fun. I've been playing that on my Switch, uh, but I play a lot of Fortnite, too, and that's on Xbox, so uh, I don't know why you needed to know that, but you should go check that out. Uh, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can create a Twitch Prime account, which I learned is the actual name of what it is, and um, what you can do there, uh, like I said, you combine the two accounts, you get one free subscribe. A subscribe on Twitch is typically a $5 a month uh, deal, uh, however, with... Uh, if you already have an Amazon Prime account, you don't have to worry about that. And uh, why are you giving Jeff Bezos and his penis rocket another $5? Don't. Don't let that man make any more money. That's why you got to give money to Daddy Shweezy. Uh, and I really like that. Uh, so that's something you need to do. 
um, as well. Uh, you can always just follow, though. The follows are free as well. Um, and if you also want to support the show financially, you can also check us out on Patreon, where you can, uh, like I said, financially support the show, help Daddy Sweezy uh, get things going, help Daddy out, keep Daddy going. Daddy, Daddy needs your money. Daddy needs needs you. Daddy needs everything. Uh, if you did not know, uh, Daddy... Daddy is the reason we're here today. I am Daddy. You're a Daddy. Daddy, I have decided, is my new. You know, I was sick. I was using Daddy as a gender neutral term, and at this point, I, I kind of like it. And so I'm going to keep calling people Daddy. Women, the non binaries, um, you know, you know, you just get a bowl cut and dye your hair pink, and you're like, I'm I'm non binary now. Uh, that's how that works, I assume. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, and like I said, yeah, go, you can subscribe to the show on Patreon, uh, or you can, uh, help us out on Patreon financially support us. But I bet you're wondering, Sweezy, oh, sorry, Daddy, what can we do to help you out, Daddy? Uh, well, Daddy is here to tell you all the things that, uh, you can do for free. So, uh, if you're watching the show on YouTube, which, uh, we do have visuals, I knew, know our audience is a lot bigger, uh, audio, but we do have... Uh, video to you can go check us out on YouTube. Uh, like the video, leave a comment on what your thoughts are. Uh, go check out the highlights too. Um, the highlights are just we cut up everything, the, hi- the best parts of the podcast, and uh, do that. So that'd be a great way to subscribe on YouTube and uh, like that. Like, subscribe, leave a comment on the video, you know, or you can dislike the video. I don't give a fuck. And that's the that's the kind of shit you can do on that. Um, if your audio, obviously you know, like it, subscribe to it, leave a review, especially on Apple. Um, does Spotify have reviews? Cause f- so we got to get up on our Spotify reviews. Uh, cause daddy needs you to subscribe, uh, to the podcast. So, uh, daddy needs you to leave a review. Do that like a five star, four star, three star. Honestly, if you think we suck ass, go for it. I probably offend, I'm going to offend someone though, but that's free shit you can do. Um, follow me everywhere on social media, uh, at the Shweezy, officially everywhere. Uh, I changed on TikTok from the Foreplay King to uh, the Shweezy just to make sure the brand is solid across here right before recording this podcast. Oh, it's 420 while I'm recording this. Uh, before I was recording the podcast, I posted a TikTok of me deep-throating a uh, Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. If you're watching the show, I have it right here. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, that was... That's the kind of, uh, That's rough, buddy. Which one do I have? The, this is the type of guy you this, get. That's the one. So that's shit you can follow me on TikTok for. But anyway, so follow me on all the free shit. You know, be it's a great way to say thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And I really like that. Okay. Let's get into previous week right now. So for those of you who don't know what previous week right now is, previous week right now is the news curated by me. Now, I see all the news, and I find the stuff that I think is important, and then I read it for you right now on the podcast because Daddy wants you to know the news and the news that matters, and that's what Daddy is here to do. Daddy is here to bring the news, Um, the news with Daddy today. Um... Let's just get right into it. Um, this is from Hill Reporter. We're just let's just get right into it, as Philip DeFranco says on his show and during sex. A uh, Catholic Monsignor who wanted to deny Biden communion resigns after cell phone links him to gay dating app. That's rough, buddy. Um, like Biden, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is also a faithful Catholic. She angrily attacked Donald Trump last year when he questioned her faith. Recently, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops voted to approve a document concerning the sacrament of communion. The measure would prevent politicians like Biden and Pelosi, who have voted to allow abortion rights from receiving the holy sacrament. The General Secretary of the USCCB, Monsinger, I don't even know, uh, Monsignor, I'm probably going to say that wrong, and I also don't care. 
that's the way it is. Uh, Jeffrey Burl, Jeffrey, <laughs> read the voting results to the conference back in June. Burl has now resigned from his position after cell phone data, uh, cell phone, it's a, it's a smartphone, revealed data, uh, data revealed that he used the gay dating app Grinder and regularly visits gay bars. Congratulations, you played yourself. Uh, the allegations against Burl were originally reported by The Pillar, a Catholic news service that a site reports a mobile device correlated to Burl emitted app data signals from the location-based hookup app Grinder on a nearly daily basis during parts of 2018, 2019, and 2020 a both at both his USCCB office and his USCCB-owned residence, as well as during USCCB meetings and events in other cities. Cities. Uh, Archbishop Jose Gomez, the UCCB president, confirmed the news writing in a memo that the Monsinger resigned due to impending media cut reports alleging possible improper behavior. He continued, the conference takes all allegations of misconduct seriously and will pursue all appropriate steps uh, to address them. So, so we're going to get into a lot of thoughts. Let me just see if I have any important messages on. Um, so, um, I guess so. I guess uh, he's very famous. They didn't talk about this in the article. It's just the catchy headline that got me. Uh, the the Catholic monster who wanted to deny Biden communion. So I guess um, I guess I go to churches and I've been to churches when back in the day uh, I used to go to churches where uh, everyone was allowed to have communion, and then uh, apparently other denominations uh, give a shit or something like that. Or about communion, uh, they're like some of them were like, uh, what was it? I had to be. Ba- I think my parents didn't let me d- take communion until I was baptized uh, or whatever. Um, like you're not not allowed until you have baptism. And I think, you know, as a kid though, I think I got baptized when I was like 11, 12. and so I think in my mind I was like, well, I want to take communion, so that's why I did it. But I also, yeah, I also grew up, so eventually I was gonna have to. Gonna have to take the plunge to get the baptized, baptized in the name of the Lord. Um, but yeah, then I think like my roommate's parents went to our uh, church thing in college, and they didn't take communion because they there's some rule like if you think someone's not worthy of communion, taking communion, you don't take communion. Some bullshit like that. I know Josh is gonna text me Monday morning, uh, uh, all about this shit. And, um, cause this is his shit. Uh, Adrash, obviously author of a uh, track and desire, a journey after small tail kites, uh, out now on a uh, Kindle unlimited. Uh, that's how I have it. I don't have a physical copy yet. Uh, no audiobook Cause that's my job. And, uh, I'm actually expecting a physical copy of the book, um, for helping with the audiobook. That's just, uh, this is the type of guy you get. So, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. So, I guess it's a situation they denied Biden communion because they didn't think he was a man of God enough or whatever whatever bullshit they justify um, to him. Because I guess – because aren't, aren't Catholics a little bit more liberal than uh, all the others? Um, I, I don't know, man. I haven't gone to church since, like, 2017. And you're like, 2017, that wasn't that long ago. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's sad for me, too. Um, but nevertheless, though, um, he persisted. So, first of all, um, oh, it's like a document in Sacrament of Communion, um, shit like that. Um, and also another thing, aren't the, aren't the Catholics cool with the gay people now? Aren't the Catholics cool with the gays? Um, didn't the Pope Francis say that? I guess I could be different. Um between each, uh, church, but, uh, maybe the Catholic church is splitting again. Oh no, (laughs) not again. Now, like I said, like I'm saying again, uh, but, uh, um, okay. So I need to, maybe I wasn't paying attention while I was reading it nearly daily basis for three years, 2022, buddy, you were risking your health for some, some man action. Um, he reports alleging possible improper, improper behavior. Um, I mean, this guy sounds like a shitty person, but also at the same time, I'm kind of wondering though, um, is, is it okay? Like, 
did it do anything? Did it go against his job? Did it affect his job performance? Or is it using, like, job stuff? I guess they don't like him being gay or whatever. I guess that's the situation. I also think a lot of times, uh, I, was, I was talking to my brother uh, yesterday. Um, uh, what was the meme I sent him? Uh, it was, maybe I'll just... Um, was it being gay on TV? I'm, not, I'm just going to describe the meme. I could post it here if you're watching on video, but that I don't want to edit. Um, so it's being gay on TV. It's just a nice, loving couple. And then uh, being gay in real life is just a message that, hi, want to drink my piss on Ikea? I'm also 33. My brother responds with, oh, grinder, those were not the days. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'm just like, imagine, and I was like, imagine if, they had like a grinder for straight people and it was like women would just get sexually assaulted. That's all that would happen. Um, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's what would happen. So I was like, that's not be good. And my brother's like, well, Tinder's the same way, but he spelled it T I N D R. Didn't put the E R in there. I'm like, well, us straights, um, us straights use the hard E R, um, in many different circumstances. Uh, uh, I like that. That was not the right one. I, I do apologize. That's rough, buddy. That's the right one, okay? That could have been really bad. Um, but anyways, though, but also, I feel like for a guy, like, if you're gay, because, you know, guys will, like, go to, because guys go to any length to try to get laid, but, like, not all women, not women, women don't do that shit. Um, so it has to be easy if you're a gay man just to have sex. That has to be, like, the best part of, like, being gay. Just being like, um, if I want to have sex today, I can. Uh, I just get on Grinder, um, swipe a little bit, and I eventually find a really creepy guy. And we have sex. And uh, maybe I'm on the bottom. That's how I'm ending that. Um, that did I, did I really shed light on this situation? Barely. Or am I going to move on? Yes. Um, Irish gymnasts test Olympics anti-sex beds. Uh, this is from The Hill. Uh, the Olympic Village's beds are made of cardboard, and while it is sustainable for a person to sleep on, there has been speculation that the Olympics are trying to prevent athletes from having sex during their stay. One Irish gymnast, Rise McClinigan, that's the most Irish name of her, Rise McClinigan, Rise McClinigan, like, it's so long, like, McClin again decided to take to Twitter to test the durability of his anti-sex bed. In, uh, in, in quotations, we're quoting the guy, in, today, in today's episode... Oh, okay, she... Irish is Shrek, okay. Oi, donkey, what are you doing in my swamp? In today's episode of fake news at the Olympic Games, the beds are meant to be anti-sex. They are made out of cardboard. Yeah, this is sounding Middle Eastern now. Yes, but apparently... They are meant to break at any certain movement. It sounds, now I just sound Middle Eastern. We're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, McClinigan said on Twitter, let me just read it in my normal words. In today's episode of Fake News at the Olympic Games, the beds are meant to be anti-sex. They're made out of cardboard, yes, but apparently they're meant to break at any sudden movements, McClinigan said on Twitter. Uh, the cardboard beds are said to be turned into recycling paper after the games, according to Tokyo 2020. The New York Post reported, We are promoting the use of recycled materials for procured items and construction materials at the Tokyo 2020 games. The games officially sustainability pre-games report said, The rumored anti-sex bed stories came from the Olympian Paul Kalimo, an American distance runner who last week commented on Twitter saying the beds to be installed in the Tokyo Olympic Village will be made of cardboard. This is aimed at avoiding intimacy among athletes. Um, so, um, there's many thoughts here. Um, so I, so the, the idea of these cardboard beds, it, taking the idea of these like are anti-sex beds, like are a little, I mean, they're kind of convenient. I mean, it's like you can easily carry them, like you can fold it up, carry it, take it somewhere, set it up, and then I guess recycle if needed, need be, you know, instead of like doing out of wood or whatever shit like that, you know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of a cool idea, the, the cardboard beds, you know, that idea is really cool, um, before the anti-sex thing, but, um, I also want to think this is, this is Tokyo, um, like, 
it's like it's very known like if you're a if you're a tourist like American tourist and you go to Tokyo they they're like why are they why is everyone taking pictures of everything because everything's so like unique in Tokyo so could be a Tokyo thing I don't know I'm not an expert um but anyways we we have talked about this before um with the uh the lack of condoms so they really don't want people having sex this year at the Olympics, this this session of the Olympics, they really don't want people having sex, which is a bummer because I have to imagine the best part about being an Olympic athlete is all the pussy you get when you when you when you're in the Olympic Village. It's like everyone's here and we're all gonna get laid. Uh, but thank God uh, for McLennan for Rise McLennigan. Uh, <laughs> was it weird that again? This episode of fake news the Olympic Games. The beds are meant to be anti-sex. They're made out of cardboard, yes, but apparently they're meant to break at any seven movements. So, so I think the next point is, if, if, if let's say these are anti-sex beds, have you watched any porn? I would say fifty percent of it takes place on a bed. A lot of porns on couches these days, and. I don't know if that's cool or not. Um, you know, you don't really think about where um, the porn is being shot. You're like, you see a lot of couches. Kitchens are very, you know, on the kitchen counter. Uh, but, you know, beds. It's not always beds, people. It's not always beds. So I think, look, the these athletes uh, have the, what's, it, what's the, the adrenaline and can, you know, keep up with having sex in different positions. They have the abilities. These are the greatest athletes in the world. They can do this. Um, And if they have to have sex standing up, they'll do it because they can. If you can run 20 miles, I guarantee you you can have sex standing up. I am just making a guess at this. Um, I'm making a guess. If you can run 20 miles, I have a good feeling Water polo. If you can do water polo, I'm pretty sure you can have sex standing up. You know how hard that is? I just get tired looking at water polo. And you're like, Jesus. They're not touching the floor, people. They're not like, they're not even on their tippy toes on the floor. They're just keeping themselves floating there, folks. Uh, this is the type of guy you get. So that's that's something uh, you need to keep in mind. I don't think cardboard beds are going to stop anyone from having sex, and I hope it doesn't. Um, I hope these athletes go strong and uh, continue the good fight. Um, oh, this is from our friends over at Page Six, you know, bringing us such news as um, some great news, such as uh, Angelina Jolie gets a hot dog. Um, Page Six is back with another uh, great, uh, with another great. Uh, thing and actually kind of do this um from page six like i said morgan wallen admits to using n-word around certain group of friends from page six morgan wallen admitted that a leaked video of him saying the n-word earlier this year was not the first time he's used the racial slur i wouldn't say i have used it frequently no no not frequently. It was just around this certain group of friends, the country singer 28 told Michael Strahan on Good Morning America Friday in the first interview since the scandal. Remember, Michael Strahan is black. I don't know if a lot of you knew that, but he's black. Um, Wallen faced immense backlash on social media in February after TMZ published a video of him drunkenly telling a friend to take care of this poop pussy ass inward when they return home from a night out in nashville uh the whiskey glasses singers record label big loud swiftly responded by indefinitely suspending him and several radio stations stopped playing his music my manager called me probably two hours before the video came out while on recalled friday he was like are you sitting down and no one's ever called me and said that before uh, the CMA award winner acknowledged to Strahan 49 that he was clearly drunk in the video, which he said led to him saying dumb stuff on hour 72 of a 72 hour bender uh, with his friends in with his friends in our minds. It's playful. You know, he said, I don't know if that sounds ignorant, but that's really where it came from. It's wrong. I didn't mean it in any derogatory manner at all. In the midst of the scandal, Wallen checked into a rehab facility for 30 days. I spent some time out in San Diego, California. You know, 
know, just trying to figure it out, he told Strahan. Why am I acting this way? Do I have an alcohol problem? Do I have a deeper issue? The former Voice contestant said he also donated around 500000 to organizations, including the Black Music Action Coalition. Now, now folks, um, this doesn't stop him from being a piece of shit. Um, Morgan Wallens is still a piece of shit, and his name is Morgan. That's a girl's name. That's a, Morgan is a girl's name. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Is that worse than the N-word thing? To, is, is it worse that his name is Morgan instead of the N-word? And also, he said he had a night out in Nashville. Now, I have a strong feeling he went to fucking, well, no, downtown Broadway, Nashville, where only tourists go. And if you're from here and you go there uh, without someone who's from out of town, you're fucking out of your mind, because that is the worst place to go in Nashville, in in my opinion. This is the type of guy you get. Um, also, so he's like, uh, I say the N-word around certain groups of friends. Um, I'm going to make a wild guess and say your friends are also racist with you. Um, he's like, and it's not the first time he's used the racial swear. No shit. If you're using it, he's 28 years old. If he, if, That's not the first time he's using it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know, folks. What? <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. I don't even know any of his songs. I'm going to be honest with you. I know zero of his songs. And, yeah, I, I literally know zero of his songs. Whiskey Glasses? That's... And he went to rehab. He's like, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic or not, but I'm going to go to rehab in San Diego. It sounds like he went to, like, summer camp. And, um... Did he say he quit drinking? No. Uh, he said he checked into a rehab facility. A 72-hour bender to... Um, I mean, he was clearly drunk in the video, but... Uh, uh, was it... What, what's the saying? Uh, drunk... Drunk words or sober minds. Uh, I'm going to see if I can look that up. Uh, drunk thoughts are sober word. What's the... A drunk tongue is an honest one. That's that's the the weird like uh, Pinterest picture I saw that said that. And yet, in the same situation, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, Morgan Wallen is still a piece of shit. People, you should not listen to his music. And uh, we all know you little white some bunch of white girls who live in small towns. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with either of those, but I'm saying like I'm still gonna miss and listen to Morgan Wallen's. Like we know you're racist. You can calm down. You know him being racist is not a problem to you. Um, but uh, it should be. Uh, if you're a good person, it should be. But, you know, I have a friend who works in radio, and he's like, he's like, I've never seen someone get dropped that fast from the radio and his record label. Like, like that. We're like, we're not going to deal with your shit, Morgan Wallens. And uh, neither should you. And you should be offended his name is Morgan, because that's a girl's name. That's not... Uh, I would say being called Morgan for a guy is worse than being named Josh. I will say that here. If you're a guy named Morgan, it's worse than being named Josh. That's the, that's the stance we're going to go with here today. Um, let's move on to our last article. This one's very interesting. From Mirko Press. And I know you're thinking, uh, oh, I get my news from Mirko Press. Uh, if it was opposite day. So let's move in here. Argentine Health Ministry needs 10,000 wooden penises for educational purpose. This is the type of guy you get. Okay, let's just... Uh, I, I, that was the button I pressed, and we're going to go on it. Argentina's health ministry was called for tenders to purchase a large assortment of items, including 10 thousand wooden human penises for educational purposes it was reported other needs to be fulfilled at the state's expense are 10,000 dispensers of condoms which will be manufactured in such a way that they can be hung in public buildings and 10,000 turquoise briefcases stamped and with ribbons to the tone together with the replicas of the male genitalia packed in 100 boxes of 100 units each according to the ministry's website also among the condition to be fulfilled by bidders is that the sculptures be neatly polished and measure around 17 centimeters. Uh, the items will reportedly be used for sexual education activities and will entail a disbursement of AR dollar amount 
thirteen million three hundred seventy one thousand one hundred the U.S. one thousand thirty. Oh, okay. In U.S. dollars, it's one hundred thirty eight thousand nine hundred sixty four at the official exchange rate. Okay. As explained in Resolution thirty five of two uh, twenty one, the request for this the material was made by the. Direct word of response to HIV, STI, viral hepatitis, and tuberculosis, and will be intended for the general population and health professionals to be distributed in primary health care centers uh, or CAPS, uh, health regions, provincials, and municipal group programs, and other establishments throughout the country. Um, so, I mean, for education, it's probably a good thing. However, people are going to be stealing the fucking wooden penises. And also, I have a feeling, I have a strong feeling um, that some woman or a guy, actually it can be any gender, honestly, at this point, um, they're either going to get a splinter in their ass or their vagina. Now, now... You know, I assume that being a doctor, you've pulled many things out of many asses. But at the same time, when it's like a splinter, like when it's a splinter in the ass or the vagina, that seems weird. You know, you're like, oh, you shoved, uh, I was like, oh, you shoved a, a bouncy ball in your ass and now it's stuck. Okay, well, no problem. Um, and you're like, how'd you get a splinter in your ass? He's like, well, there was, I had a woman, a wooden penis, and I shoved it up there. Uh, was it for sexual pleasure? Yes, yes, it was. If you, (laughs) some people like it in the butt. Um, anyways, though, yeah, I I just think a splinter in the ass or a splinter in the vagina has to, would probably suck. And, uh, that's why I will not be shoving, uh, I don't have a vagina, so... I can't do that, but that's why I will not be shoving a wooden penis into my butthole. And you can quote me on that. Look at you. You were able to get your hands on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. Look at how lucky you are. But you don't have any games to play with it. Congratulations. You played yourself. Well, what if I told you that you could play games for a fraction of the new game price? Well, today's sponsor, Gamefly, is here to help you out. You probably already know that Gamefly is the best video game rental service out there. Let's be real. There's some games you're going to keep forever, which for me are Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Most games out there, you're only going to play once, then never pick up again. I know. I bought some games that are now just taking up space on a shelf, which sucks. That's where Gamefly comes in perfectly, because Gamefly literally is the best video game rental service out there. You can keep the games as long as you want, and when you're done, you just send it back and then get your next game in the mail very quickly, like two days. And if you end up loving the game you rented, you can even keep the purchase from Gamefly and pay a used game price, which is a great price. Using our link in the description today, get your first two months of Gamefly for only $10. So start playing new games using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Look at you, you fat piece of shit. Hashtag pray for Micah. Looks like you haven't moved a muscle in the last year. Why not try and lose some extra weight and work towards a healthy lifestyle? To do that, though, you are going to need some fitness supplements to get the most out of your workout. That's where today's sponsor, FNX Fitness, comes in handy. Losing weight? Gaining muscle? Or do you need the energy to do a workout in the first place? That's where FNX Fitness comes in. FNX Fitness is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. I also really enjoy their clothing line that makes you look good while you work out as well. And another thing I love about FNX Fitness is that with every purchase, they donate a gallon of water to a child in need. Start working out smarter 
not harder, by using the link in our description today. You can save 15% on your purchase, so uh, go save 15% on some of the best supplements out there when using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. So it's the 42nd episode of Cancel Shweezy, so I thought we needed to celebrate with a movie review, the, one of the more popular segments. And uh, 42 is a significant number in the movie uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so I thought it'd be a good idea to today that I review the movie. And I went through it, I watched it, and we're going to go in-depth of things I've thought about when watching the movie. So let's just, uh, let's, like Bill Franco says before sex, let's just get right into it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so basically, uh, the movie starts out, uh, the world is ending. The dolphins tried to warn the humans, but it got lost in translation. Um, but the dolphins, I guess, are cool. Had They got all these fish, so I guess, guess it kind of works out for all of them, to be honest. Uh. Yeah, I guess it uh, worked out for the dolphins, so, like, the dolphins disappear and everything, and so that's the beginning of the movie. Um, uh, and then we meet our main character, Arthur Dent. Now, will I be calling him Arthur throughout this interview? Um, no, I will not. He's played by Martin Freeman. I will most likely be calling him Bilbo the entire, this entire thing. Um, because, uh... This is the type of guy you get. So, yeah. So, we got a uh, good old uh, Bilbo Baggins here. Um, so, apparently, so the movie starts off, it's like, apparently they're wanting to build a bypass through his house, um, which is very poor planning, because I feel like there was enough empty space around the entire house that would have been okay. For them to use, I'm not sure why they necessarily had to use um, this specific area for uh, Arthur for this bypass, but no, they couldn't have gone around. They had to go directly through uh, Arthur's house, and so luckily his alien friend Ford comes in to help him out, and so I guess like Ford was like. It's like, hey, he brought, like, a shopping cart's worth of beer, give it to the construction workers, like, don't start till you finish those. Um, and then I guess uh, they're like, let's go to a pub for a pint. And, like, Arthur's still in his, like, pajamas, like, the entire the entire time. He's still in his pajamas. Uh, and so he's like, why are we drinking a pint? And Arthur's like, I'm actually an alien. Uh, the world is ending, and I'm going to save your life. And I guess uh, during the time at the bar where all this is being explained to him, uh he reflects that he wanted to have a relationship with Jess from New Girl, uh, but she ends up ditching him at this party uh, due to, what can we say, uh, a douchebag who wants to show her his spaceship. And so in my mind, immediately, I'm like, Be gone, fuck! But uh, anyways, that's more important for later. Um so, yeah, basically that's happening, and everyone's like, the world's ending, let's make sure we have some alcohol in our system. Smart, smart move. Um, so, and then then we get up to, and then, like, this spaceship comes up, so this Harvey Weinstein-looking aliens, like, uh, that he's demolishing Earth for, like, a hyperspace expressway or some shit. I, I don't know. I, I cannot explain... Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, I may have not paid the best attention when I watched this movie. <laughs> Somehow I wrote notes the entire movie, and I'm like, I don't know if I was paying attention very well. But nevertheless, uh, Daddy's making some content. Daddy's making your favorite open wine. And I really like that. Um, so, yeah, they're like, because they're building that. So it's very, very good parallel to uh, what's happening to Arthur's home at that same current moment. Uh, so then Bilbo and Ford uh, get the hell off of Earth. And, uh, yeah, they make it onto one of the Harvey Weinstein looking aliens. I'm going to call them, I think they're called, uh, Vogons. That's what they're called. Uh, however, um, I'm not going to call them Vogons because they all look like Harvey Weinstein. Um, I could pull up a picture. I'm not going to, um, 
Uh, but yeah, no, the Vogons look all look like Harvey Weinstein, so I'm just calling them like the Harvey Weinstein aliens. Um, and so, like, yeah, they somehow get up on one of their ships uh, to hitchhike, and that's when we're introduced to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now, from what I watched on a single YouTube video, uh, that the idea for, like, even this whole entire series was this idea of, I guess, the author of the books, I don't know the fuck his name, he... He saw a book. He, I guess, he woke up from a drunk night you know, from, with a book that just that said like "Hitchhiker's Guide to Europe" or something like that. And uh, then he had the idea for the galaxy. And so you you learn everything how to get around this this universe. It's really fun. Um, but yeah, it's on the const- so they make it on the construction ship. Um, the guide introduces them to the Harvey Weinstein aliens. Um, that they're like bureaucrats and they're awful, but they also. But also their poetry is bad too, which I've not heard a lot of good poetry, so I could probably believe uh, that. I, I can believe that very easily. Um, so, oh yeah, and then they put this weird translator fish in Bilbo's ear, and it's like, oh, the the fish can translate anything. Like they can do cows and like random ass animals too. Like animals now, uh, humans can now speak to animals, and so uh, that I guess is cool. Uh, for the movie, but like I guess in the original, that a lot of people who like the actual book do not like this movie. Uh, I just want to say that I enjoyed the movie, um, to say that to say the least. But apparently, the idea of this translator fish was supposed to be the the proof that God doesn't exist. And uh, I'm I mean I'm gonna let it slide here on this one. Uh, this is the type of guy you get on this um, on this. So now he can. Now we can understand every species that's ever existed ever. Um, but then, like, yeah, they get caught by the Harvey Weinstein aliens. They get tied up, and then one of them reads his poetry. Um, and then the Harvey Weinstein aliens are like, what do you th- what did you think about it? And then Bilbo, Bobo lies, of course. is like, well, I think there's a lot of deeper meaning uh, behind that. You know, tries to find meaning behind shit. Um, sometimes you can do that a lot, um, and I think it's a good thing to do. Um, but I've come to learn... And I dated a girl who was a dancer and we went to some dance shit um, or whatever. And I was like, is there supposed to be a meaning behind this? I was like, oh, is this supposed to be like a separation? No, I think they're just dancing. I'm like, there's no meaning behind it. I'm like, okay, cool. I just wasted 20 minutes of my life. Um, but yeah, Bilbo tries to find meaning behind it. And they're like, you know what? We're going to kill you anyways. And so they throw them into the vacuum of space. Um, so after they get thrown into the, the vacuum of space, they get picked up by... Justin Hammer from Iron Man 2 and Jess from New Girl. Um, and also they have a depressed robot uh, played by Severus Snape. So um, that that's the rest. Of the, so they get picked up by them. Um, yeah, yeah, they then they have, yeah, they have Snape, robot Snape bring them to them once they find out they have hitchhikers. Uh, but uh, luckily, um, luckily in this case, uh, Justin Hammer and, uh, Ford were previous friends. Um, so that's very convenient. And also the girl Bilbo wanted to fuck Jess from New Girl was on the ship too. So very convenient, uh, for everyone. And, uh, just very, very exciting for him. Um, so, and then also like, there's this weird plot. I think it's just the movie doing a bad job of this. I think apparently the books and other, radio shows and the TV show did a lot better on this, but I guess Justin Hammer is the president of the galaxy and he stole a spaceship, but the, the Harvey Weinstein aliens didn't understand. They thought he was kidnapping himself. I don't know if I'm getting that. I'm just not understanding this or if I did not pay attention very well. Like I said, I don't know how well I paid attention. Maybe I did pay attention very well, and I just don't understand what's going on. Um, Either one uh, can exist. Uh, So I guess, uh, yeah, and then so the Harvey Weinstein aliens are after the ship, and uh, they're not happy, but Justin Hammer and crew go into hyperspace and shit like that. And then also he mentions, like, hey, don't don't uh, mention to Jess from New Girl that uh, Earth is destroyed because she's not going to be happy about it. Um, like anyone, knowing their entire planet is destroyed, they were not happy about it. Um, 
So then we get on to kind of some plot to the movie. Um, so we're showing like a flashback. I guess he's searching for this computer or whatever. Um, so flashback to a couple of child geniuses who were, who are searching for the meaning of life. So they built a smart computer and get this, get this folks. They named the computer deep thought. Oh my gosh. So deep. I fucking love it. Um, so they ask the computer, what is the meaning of life? And, uh, computers like, Oh, sorry. Deep thought. Oh my gosh. So deep. I fucking love it. Uh, deep thought says that, uh, and I believe it's a she or non-binary. I can't, I don't, I'm not going to get into that today. They said it'll take 7.5 million years to calculate it. And um, so they wait 7.5 million years. And then they're like, all right, what the fuck is the answer to this question? And uh, Deep Thought. Oh my gosh, so deep. I fucking love it. Uh, says the, the meaning of life is, uh, the answer to life or whatever is 42. Um, and it's. That's why we're here today, because this is the 42nd episode of Cancel Shweezy. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, but so they have the, that's the ultimate answer, but I guess they didn't ask the ultimate question. It's supposed to be British humor. So um, my American mind cannot comprehend, apparently. Apparently, uh, my, Brit- my American mind won't comprehend this shit. Um, but nevertheless, though, Deep thought. Oh my gosh, so deep. I fucking love it. He's trying to build like another computer to help find the meaning of, to find the ultimate question. So they got the ultimate answer, but now they're looking for the ultimate question. Answers 42. This is some algebra right here. Answers 42. Now we gotta find the problem, I guess. Ah, well. And that's what they're trying to do. This, this is the plot of the movie, and I guess that's what Justin Hammer from Iron Man 2 is trying to figure out. Uh, so anyways, uh, we go into hyperspace again. Uh, oh, yeah, and then they go into, like, this This one's funny. They go into, like, a description of how the universe was made, and it was like, the, the universe was made, and everyone thought that was a bad idea. That was bad. No one liked it. Uh, so I guess that's when God left or whatever or shit like that. Um so that was funny, and they were like, this is bad. But then they go to this church uh, run by John Malkovich. Um, John Malkovich, I don't know from many roles, so we're just going to call him John Malkovich. I don't even know his name in the movie. I actually don't know any, like, any of these people's names, except for uh, Ford um, and Arthur, I guess. But we're not even calling him Arthur, we're calling him Bilbo. Um, apparently, Justin Hammer and John Malkovich have some shit to settle, um... But uh, apparently they set that aside because John Malkovich uh, has somewhat of the coordinates, I guess, or whatever, to get to the, uh, to Deep Thought. Oh my gosh, so deep. I fucking love it. And so I guess um, he's like, okay, well, uh, if you get me this gun, uh, this specific gun, I will let you borrow this or whatever to do it. And then for collateral, I guess they take Justin Hammer's second head. By the way, he has a second head. I don't know if I mentioned that, um, but I know it's a big thing in the original, um, but the second head was kind of annoying me in the uh, movie. And so therefore I was okay with it being gone. Um, but you know, after they do get that, they get ambushed by the Harvey Weinstein aliens. Um, they don't get the president, but they get Jess from new girl. And so I guess they have to go to the Harvey Weinstein planet uh, to get Jess from New Girl out of prison. Uh, she gets interrogated in the prison, and they're like, what planet are you from? And she was like, Earth. And they're like, oh, that was destroyed. I'm like, they're like, really? And I'm like, what happened? And they're like, um, yeah, uh, Justin Hammer from Iron Man 2 signed the order because he thought it was getting an autograph to... Uh, demolish Earth, and she was not happy about that shit. Um, not happy about that shit at all. Um, and that's when I, yeah, that's when I thought, I was like, oh, so they thought she kidnapped the president? But they don't understand, I don't understand the joke. I guess, I think it's just the movie not explaining the joke very well. 
Um, but they apparently thought someone kidnapped the president, but the president is... No one's kidnapping the president. And that's the joke, I guess. Um, I don't get it. Um, but, but yeah, then no one's happy Justin Hammer destroyed Earth. Uh, and then, and then, oh yeah, and Jess is also made aware that Bilbo Baggins did not tell her about it. Uh, and so they eventually fill out all this paperwork and shit like that, uh, and they get her out of prison. And uh, right before she's about to die, too, uh, so very convenient timing. Uh, but Jess is basically like, grow a pair of balls. Uh, you should have been, should have told me that Earth was destroyed. Grow some balls. And I know what you're thinking. Shweezy, you're being very sexist right now. However, we all know pee is stored in the balls. Man, and that's why it's called the penis. Penis. That's P is stored in the balls. Now, we also have something to say here. You know, P is stored in the balls. And they're like, women don't have a penis. And that's right, you are. But they do have balls. They're just on the inside. That's how women's balls work. Because women pee too. And they pee out of their, and P is stored in the balls. Therefore, women have balls. Okay. Uh, any questions, class? Any questions about where P is stored? Because P is stored in the balls. Okay? Dr. Fauci said it, and now I'm saying it. And who's smarter, me or Dr. Fauci? Um, I'm going to drink some of this Waterloo. Not sponsored, by the way. Um, so they continue this planet named... Now they spelled it on the TV. The TV I watch this movie on. However, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right, so I'm just not going to pronounce it at all. So I'm just going to say it's called Margarita. Uh, so they try to end up go to this planet called Margarita, and it's closed. And I know what you're thinking. How is a planet closed? That's the that's the joke. <laughs> that's British humor for you. Down to bump. So yeah, Margarita is closed. So they just continue onto it anyways. Um, and then, uh, they have thermal nuclear missiles attacking them. And in my mind, how I imagine thermal nuclear missiles are, they look at the thermals of the ship. And so it's able to follow the ship to attack it. I don't know much more than that folks. So if you're wanting a science lesson, I don't know, go on YouTube, listen to fucking the liturgist podcast or the science Mike podcast. I don't know what the fuck y'all listen to. Um, that's not as good as this podcast. This podcast is the best podcast. Uh, so yeah, they eventually, they go into hyperspace where like, oh yeah. And then this movie, if you haven't seen it, um, when you go into hyperspace, things like change into different objects. Like when Arthur and, uh, Ford first initially got on, um, to like, uh, Justin Hammer's ship, uh, they, there were sofas and then like that to return to normalcy inside the ship. So that's like, it's just a weird thing going to other dimensions. It's okay. It's, it's a, jo it's a joke. Okay. Um, anyways, they do that and somehow make it back to the planet. And, uh, now the missiles are like flowers and then they have this whole scene with the whale falling to its death. Um, so yeah. Uh, so basically there um so that's basically how they do it so they end up like finding this interdimensional portal uh to go to wherever the fuck deep thought is oh my gosh so deep i fucking love it and uh with that being said yeah so they make it through there um but uh bilbo baggins is too much of a pussy and does not make it through so everyone else is there except for bilbo baggins because bilbo baggins pussies out because uh, he doesn't have a pair of balls. Like we say, he doesn't have a pair of balls uh, where P is stored. P is stored in the balls. Um, and so he basically gets picked up by Rufus Scrimger uh, from Harry Potter. He was in like the, uh, had a big role. He he was in the sixth book, but wasn't in the movie. But he was in the seventh movie. He's the one at the very beginning. These are dark times indeed. If you want to know who that is, um... Uh, and basically he shows them a factory where they build planets and apparently, uh, there's something, they built a second earth and there's a reason for that, which I will get into in just a second. 
And in the movie, I forgot to say, uh, they're like, humans are the third most intelligent species. The second is dolphins. That was the beginning. Uh, but we don't know who the first intelligent species are. Um, it's definitely not deer. Um, if you see a deer, they're not very smart. So it's definitely deer or out of the question. Um, but uh, so anyways, let's go back to the other gang. Uh, so they finally find Deep Thought. Oh my gosh, so deep. I fucking love it. And uh, basically he starts asking them oh, Deep Thought shit. I'm not going to press the button again. Uh, oh yeah, and apparently the answer to the great question was Earth. Apparently, and of course Justin Hammer destroyed it. Um... But they were able to get the, the gun for John Malkovich, and the gun is called Point of View Gun, which uh, they have little quirks there. It's like, you want to know I'm mad? And they shoot the gun at Justin Hammer. It's like, oh, you're, you're mad because that was your home. That's why you're mad I blew up that planet. No shit. Uh, uh, so then they, on Earth 2, the gang gets back together, and uh, the mice are still looking for the ultimate question. Uh, so you learn, yeah, the mice, the white mice are question and they're trying to roofie all of them with tea and food and shit like that pulling a little bill cosby there you know my it's that movie came out in 2005 when bill cosby was still doing that shit um was using roofies bad in 2005 i want to say yes but i can't speak for society in 2005 i was in middle school so and uh, and then I guess they're about to chop off his brain because the mice need his brain for some reason. Uh, and then he's like, you know, the only answer, the only question, the ultimate question is, is if she's, and then this is Jess from New, New Girl, is the one, and the answer is yes, but she wakes up from her drugs to hear that, which is very romantic. Um, but then right before it chops his brain off, he is able to, like, get himself out of it and then kills the mice. But they turn into little humanoids before they die, so it's okay. No animals were harmed in the making of this of this film, and uh, so that was very convenient. Um, oh, and then oh yeah, no, they go back to Earth too at Arthur's house. That was where it was. If I didn't make that clear, um, then the Harvey Weinstein aliens catch up to them, and they're about to shoot, and they start shooting. Um, they actually get a good shot in on the Snape robot, but uh, they didn't. But where everyone's like, oh, he's dead, but then he wasn't dead. And then the Snape robot, uh, who is depressed throughout this entire movie, and is just a very depressed robot, and uh, they point the gun, the point, oh, the gun, I need to explain the gun. So this, oh yeah, I already explained the gun. It was a point of view gun, which lets someone see something from your point of view. So uh, the Alan Rickman robot <coughs> shot the point of view gun at all the Harvey Weinstein aliens, and they all started, went to the ground, started crying, because they were all so depressed, because that's how depression works. In the movie, and real Harvey Weinstein is probably not happy he's in jail. Is he in jail? I don't know what he's doing. I don't, I don't keep up with him. He's a gross guy. Looks like those fucking aliens in the movie. Uh, Harvey Weinstein aliens. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, so... So the movie is about to end, um, and Jess and Bilbo decide to stay on... Decide not to stay on the New Earth. They decide to explore the galaxy together. Um, because they have the ship, and they can do that, apparently. Um, and everyone, and then, oh yeah, uh, Justin Hammer hooks up with his vice president, who was there the whole time in this movie, who was not, I didn't know it was the vice president until the end of the movie. Um, I actually know, until I saw one video on YouTube. And, uh, I guess, original Earth returns back to normal with everyone who was murdered on it still. That's what happened. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but it happened in the movie. And uh, everyone lives happily ever after as they go to a restaurant on the other side of the universe. That also has something to do with on the other side of time or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, folks. I can't explain that shit. Um, so that's the end of the movie. What did I learn um, cause for some reason I think I need to learn a lesson in, when I watch any movie. What did I learn? Um, I learned that if the planet you live on is going to be destroyed, 
you should make sure the person you want to bang is not on Earth when it gets destroyed and is with you. That is what I learned on uh, this watching this movie, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, just uh, don't let the person you want to bang be on a planet that's getting destroyed. We live in a society, and our current society, actually having to physically walk into a liquor store should be a thing of the past. That's why I get all my booze from Drizzly. Drizzly gets all your favorite beer, seltzer, wine, whiskey, and much more delivered directly to your home. With their easy-to-use mobile app, we are getting one step closer to never leaving our homes. You know, it's saying something when it is being praised as the Amazon for liquor. Drizzly is my go-to app for getting all the booze I need so I can do hmm, basically anything the hell I want. So using our link in the description today, you can save $5 off your first purchase through Drizzly. Drizzly has proprietary ID verification technology that it provides to its retail partners that allows drivers to scan IDs for more than a barcode to make sure the purchaser is over 21 years old in the U.S. and of legal drinking age in Canada. Retailers on Drizzly may also have a minimum order or delivery fee. So, using the link in our description today, get $5 off your first order with Drizzly. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Cooking your own meals are for people with proper amounts of serotonin, which is no one. Are you depressed and hungry? Well, you're still going to be depressed, but you no longer have to be hungry thanks to today's sponsor, DoorDash. If you don't know of DoorDash, they bring you food you are craving directly to your door. Even while I'm dieting, I still get food from Wingstop, Chipotle, and even Central Barbecue here in Nashville. I like that. Uh, With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can get $10 off each of your first three DoorDash orders over $15 when you sign up using the link in our description. Treat yourself like the king and queen you are and order from DoorDash today. Again, that's $10 off your first three orders over $15 when you use the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. So you could not live with your own failure. Where did that lead you? Back to me. This is the type of guy you get. All right, welcome to Ask Sweezy, where I give relationship advice. Now, folks, you're coming to me for relationship advice. You should know what the fuck is going on. It's time for me to solve the world's problems. And by solving the world's problems, Daddy is here to save the day. Now, let's go into our first question. I have a guy in my band is crushing on me. That's rough, buddy. I play in a band, and other members of the band... Uh, another band member of my band is crushing pretty hard on me. When I first joined the band, we would text the odd message, but now he texts me all day. Most of the time, I'll just ignore it or give a thumbs up or a smiling face. Or if it's about music in the band, I'll talk about that. I didn't mind that much before, but recently he added me on Instagram, and I saw he's following about 700 porn pages. I don't think he realizes other people can see what he follows. Ever since then, he's completely creeped me out. I've also noticed that during rehearsal, he keeps staring at me. The thing is, I don't want to upset the dynamic of the band. I feel like... uh feel like if I, if I say something to him about it, it'll make him upset, resentful of me, and it'll make band rehearsal even worse. Ditto if I speak to anyone else in the band about it. Is there any advice uh, for how I can get him to stop texting me so much without actually confronting him about it? Um, so you're wanting to look at the problem because you're not interested in this guy. So the idea is um, you don't want to confront him but you also want to let him down easy. So it's the it's the situation. Uh, it's why most people like to ghost people, where instead of actually telling someone like, "Hey, I'm not interested," they just like, "Hmm, maybe I'll just stop talking to them altogether. Maybe they'll get the point." Um, it sounds like you do kind of do that. You do kind of ignore him, only really talk about band stuff. Um, only thing, I mean, if you get a boyfriend, that's gonna change things. You can be like, "Well, I guess she's off the market." Uh, now, and there's also a thing, though, in a band, like, you don't want to be dating each other. That's just a bad idea. In general, you're going to have a bad time. Congratulations. You played yourself. Um, that, you know, that's just a common factor. Uh, if anyone in a band, uh, don't date your band members and uh, don't bring your girlfriend on tour because that's just a recipe for a bad time. Now, if you eventually get married or whatever and you have tour buses and shit like that, eh, I mean, some things are different, but I don't know. It's still a touchy subject in the in that situation, so, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Um, 
But uh, yeah, in this situation, he follows. Are you joking when he says seven hundred porn pages? Seven hundred porn pages on Instagram. Are you talking about like porn stars? Because yeah, I don't know if that that apparently that's the that's the drawing line for you. So apparently, yeah, I'm gonna also gonna break the ice for you. All guys look at porn, and if they don't, they are called liars. Um, this is the type of guy you get. So yeah, it's just the it's weird that he follows 700, um, and that creeps you out. That's kind of weird to me, but uh, um, yeah, um, basically, um, best thing you could do, um, you don't want to confront him, but uh, you know, if we're honest with people, then things get better. Uh, we become better as a society. Uh, my suggestion is, hey, I don't want to date anyone in the band. I'm not really interested. Uh, and if he, I guess you're gonna have to wait till he actually comes out to you and shit like that. Um, but you're gonna be like, look, we're in a band together. I don't want to ruin the band's dynamic by that. I don't really want to date someone in the band. Um, but then he might quit the band, and then maybe that'll make life a little bit easier. And then you'd be like, I still don't want to date you. <laughs> At the same time, uh, that's rough, buddy. Uh, I'd say, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's going to be the best advice I really feel in regards to the situation you can do is uh, be honest uh, with him. You heard it here first, folk, folks. Uh, communication is the key to any relationship, and uh, that includes uh, the things you are petty with. Now, I'm one to talk. Um, they, they say I'm free-falling because I'm always petty. That's just the... This is the type of guy you get. So, uh, that's gonna be what I have to say on that. Just, uh, use communication. Use your words. Use your words, folks. If you use your words, things can get a little better. That's, that's the way it is. All right, let's move on to the next one. Boyfriend, my boyfriend asked if I would be okay with a polycule, polyamorous, what's a polycule? I'm, I'm. Uh, that's rough, buddy. I don't know what that is. I know what polyamorous is relationship and the immediate. And, okay. So I'm going to read this again. Uh, my boy, I'm not going to put polycule in this. My boyfriend asked if I would be okay with a polyamorous relationship in the immediate. And he immediately tried to date his ex. So this has been bothering me for some time. First, some important backstory. I've known my boyfriend for almost five years prior to us dating. He had been in a poly relationship with two to three. Can't quite remember other guys. And it wasn't working out, especially with one of the people in that relationship who I'll call M. He would constantly complain to me about M and the things M would do that was causing the relationship to be dysfunctional. Uh, because of that, this, despite the not really knowing M personally, I don't like them. Not sure if that's fair or not, but given the only information I had on this guy was negative, I thought it was fair. Flash forward and my boyfriend... And my BF broke up with M and the other people he was in a relationship with and started dating me shortly after words. Long distance at first with occasional visits and he eventually moves in with me. He occasionally will float the idea of a poly relationship towards me, but I have my reservations. And it's because after living with him in just an open relationship, I've seen him seemingly get jealous when I interact with other people. Later, he would say, it's just joking, but I digress. I eventually say I would be okay trying a poly relationship uh, should we find someone we both like or maybe even something polycule as long as we're communicating and 100% transparent. Not even three hours later after he asked if he could start dating him again. Needless to say, I told him no and that given their history and the fact that I don't like him because of that, he himself had told me about him. It was a horrible idea. He cries about it and then says that I'm right. He just thought maybe he can mend that relationship since now he has grown as a person. I stayed firm and told him that it was a bad idea and we moved past it. This was months ago and it's still a big source of my anxiety for, uh, slash insecurity for me. I feel like you really tried to take advantage of my kindness there, but it could could have been an honest mistake. I know this situation isn't exactly relatable, but what would you have done? Um, I got a message on my phone. Anything happen? No, did I not get? I thought my phone vibrated. Was it telling me you need to stand up, you fat piece of shit? Um, no, nah, it's it wasn't doing anything. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, this is all my suspicions on anything, Polly. Related, um, it looks like 
He wanted to get back with an ex, but he didn't want to lose you. I don't think this guy is really Polly. Uh, every time I see, you know, I see. That's the thing. I talk shit about Polly people, but like honestly, this is the problem with it. Uh, people just do shitty things, and they they're like, "Well, I'm polyamorous, so what do you do?" It's like it's like justifying your zodiac sign and allowing that justifying your shitty actions. It doesn't. You know what fucking astrology is? Where the stars are. Uh, it says it has nothing to do with your personality or any of that shit. Uh, you can believe in it if you want to, but know that I kind of think you're stupid if you do believe in it. Uh, well, it's I'm a Virgo, so what do you expect of me? I expect you to have an actual personality, not this shit. Uh, but I digress, like they said in this message uh, I got. Um, three hours later, yeah, he's wanting to hook up with an ex. That's what it sounds like. That's what they're trying to do. He's wanting to hook up with someone, but like still keep you around. Um, see, here's the thing. Um, if you're not comfortable being, see, and especially in the situation though here, I'm seeing that he doesn't like you dating other people, but he's okay with it. So he's a little selfish and that's not cool at all. That's not cool for anyone. So it sounds like he's being stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. And, uh, he needs to realize that, uh, he's not really Polly. He just wants to be a shitty person. Uh, that's the story with most people who are poly. Um, and, uh, if you don't like it, pretty bold of you little fucks to assume that I'm not God. Anyways, though, that's, I think, yeah, there's really not much I can say, uh, in regards to that. There's no much more, so much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back street? You never know if you don't go. What go wow? You never shine if you don't go. Oh, <sighs> so people just, it, it, don't be poly just just either ride or die or don't okay if you want to be poly don't ride, don't be like committed relationships you just sleep around like a normal single person okay you're messed up like me like i'm not telling you i'm perfect my mental health is perfect um if you've listened to uh 41 other episodes of this show or even less you could probably tell i'm not mentally healthy uh, but I can't imagine someone who wants to have multiple partners is healthy. I, it's just, it's just not, I don't know. I don't know how your brain does it. It's like, I want to have, basically, it's like, I want to have sex with more than one person at once. And then you justify it, but like, but we're in love. I'm like, you're, you love one more person better. And I know, I, and then this is a controversial, it's like, everyone's like, I love all my kids the same. Like, you do love your kids the same, but... Uh, you do have a favorite. I, I can't imagine you don't. Anyways, though, I digress. Let's get back into uh, what you came to the show for. Uh, giving, Solving your relationship problems. Uh, here we go. I like this one. Slept with my sister's friend and not sure what to do. Uh, I got divorced from my wife 10 years earlier this year. My sister is the only family I have anywhere nearby and she is really close to my ex. Uh, my sister has a friend who is currently living with her while she is house hunting. Let's call her Sarah. I don't know her really well, but she's super gorgeous, really smart, and is very uplifting. This past Saturday, I spent the day with my sister, her husband, and Sarah and went back to their house to drink. Sarah and I got pretty drunk. We were all playing games on the couch at one point and I point and i started rubbing her hair and scalp to kind of flirt i'm pretty sure everyone saw me doing that because i was drinking i decided to spend the night in the spare bedroom i do this a couple times a year good don't drink and drive people it's it's called uber just download the app it's it's worth the money. After everyone went to bed, I decided to knock on Sarah's bedroom door. She said, come in. So I did. The lights were off and she was watching TV. I asked her if I can close the close to door and <laughs> people need to learn how to write and come hang out with her. And she said, yes. So I did. I sat next to her and one minute later, I kissed her and one thing led to another and we had sex. And I really like that. We have been texting a good bit since then, and I'm really enjoying the conversations. I talked to a friend about Sarah and said I need to stop. His reasoning is, one, it's my sister's friend, and two, she's 10 years younger than me. She's 25, and I'm 35. I'm really not sure what to do here. Should I cut it off? See where things go. So, yeah, this is a this is kind of an iffy situation because it's your sister's friend. Now, the sister's friend is a lot easier uh, of a situation um, than most porno scenarios, because usually the sister gets involved too, and that's called a three-way. 
And uh, for the man, he gets the belt. If you don't know what the belt is, that's when you have a two women, one man, uh, three way. Now, if someone's non binary but has the JJ, does it does it kill count for the belt? I would like to now to be woke though. Probably not. I would. I. It's a consideration thing. I'm not sure if we as a society can are going to consider that towards the belt or not. Um, because the devil's three way is different. Uh, because that's two guys. But what if it's a man and a woman, and then you got a non-binary uh, bowl cut, pink hair in the middle? What is that? What is that saying? Is the, can if they have the vagina, is it still? Is it? Do you still win the belt? These are scientific discoveries that I am researching for all of you, and I will figure out eventually. But it's not going to be today. Uh, today I have other things to do. Now you slept with your sister's friend. Now, first of all, and I really like that. I think it's pretty cool that you did that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's see, it's an iffy situation. I don't know who you're, it's the situation is your sister. Now let's go here. Um, the, the two facts that your friend said, it's your sister's friend. She's 10 years younger than you. She's 25. You're 35. That's, you know, I, 10 years is a bit of a gap. However, I'm not going to, it's not that bad. And honestly, when, when I was 25, I was hooking up with women. I've hooked up women way older than that. So I can't, I can't necessarily be the big and the truth, but See, it's always, it's, it's a weird thing with age gaps. Like a 10-year age gap, you hear, oh, yeah, we're, there's a 10-year difference between us. So you're like, okay, how old are you and how old are they? Because if it's like, well, she's 14 and I'm 24, I'm like, oh, eh, 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 we're out of here. That's not good. 25, 35, I don't think is that bad. Like out of college, out of high school, you're in your 30s. Now, I'm not saying... And I say the farther the age gap, the weirder it can be. But this age gap, I don't think is that bad. I don't think you should worry about this age gap. Because 25, 35, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say here that's not that bad of an age gap. And not just because I've had a worse one. Uh, but anyways, um, the sister's friend is going to be the big thing. Now, what would your sister feel like if that happened? Um... And if your sister found out, I don't know your sister. See, um, it sounds like you get along with her pretty well. She has a husband. Well, and yeah, I mean, it's a friend. I mean, the friend makes it a little bit easier. Um, like if my bro, now I'm trying to think of this on my end. If my brother ended up with one of my friends, First of all, I'll be making fun. I'm making make the shit fun out of him. That fucking is hilarious. I'm like, this is the guy you end up with. One time, my brother almost like went for his masters at the college I was going to. We went to different colleges, and I was like, I really don't want him going here, mainly because I know there's one there's one guy I know he'd immediately date, like at the school I went to. I'm like, both, you know, I like my brother. I like this guy, so I'm not talking shit on either of them, but. It's one of the situations I don't want either of them to date, you know? It's just that type of... Because I have to be involved in that, and I don't want to be involved in that shit. But nevertheless, I persisted. So the issue is going to be... First of all, congratulations to you. Sounds like you hit it out of the park there, bud. Um, and I don't... Th so we'll go here. The age gap is not weird, and um, it's all going to be up to your sister. I feel like... You're going to need the blessing from your sister. If you don't get that blessing, I don't think you should be continuing this. That's the situation I'm going to go. Sounds like your sister's cool, but yeah, it's going to be, you're going to need like your sister's like blessing in, in regards to that before you even go any further. That's the way when you want it the most. There's no easy way out. I really want to write a movie. That way I can pick a soundtrack out. Part action, part comedy. I know. Opening, we're doing That's the Way It Is. Fight scene. I think I mentioned this. I want to break free by Queen. Mix some uh, sweezy songs in there. Um, and yeah, that's it. I got to go get something in my door. All right. So yeah, I finished that off. Let's go on to the next question. Should I get Tinder? 
Uh, I haven't really had a boyfriend since nearly four years. It was a really hard breakup, even though we didn't stay together for a long time. And I feel like I actually didn't really met someone that I really like since or when. I did, the other person didn't seem to feel the same way. I was now wondering about getting Tinder, but I know it's stupid. I feel like it will break something about how I perceive love, because we kind of all know why we are here. I feel like going in Tinder, in Tinder, I know you're not an English speaker, I can tell that immediately. Tinder is like going in a love market, etc., which makes me a bit sad, but at the same time, I want to meet new people. And I was wondering if someone felt ever felt like that, but still went on it. They have changed their minds. Okay, so I think I get the gist of what you're trying to say here. Um, you know, I'm on all the dating apps. I'm going to say this here. A lot of people had a lot of success on dating apps, so I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Um, basically, uh, for me, so I'm going to go with me. So a lot of people found success on it, and they could tell you why, if, if and why or how they have found success on there. Um, what, what I'll tell my perspective is I really can only judge someone on their like appearance and I'm not necessarily about that because I don't know, like, cause the idea of it for me, I'm like, okay, you're swipe on someone you find attractive and maybe you like their bio. Maybe you like their bio. Uh, I don't like that though. Cause there's been like, you know, when you see, so there's a difference when you see a picture Versus when you see someone in person, because women are always, you know, posting pictures, like, edited and shit like that. Like, you, and I don't know, someone's personality is so much better in person than, like, on the app. So, the apps are just, I mean, they work for people. They, it's very rare, though. Like, surprisingly, it's very rare. Like, some people can make it work. And I don't think we should be shaming people. We went on Tinder. I'm like, all right, that's cool. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. So you just kind of have to go in there with realistic expectations. Like, look, you're going into it. You're seeing someone on there who's you're only swiping with someone's appearance. You're not knowing their personality. You don't know if you're like attracted to them in real life versus like on a screen. Like you're we're doing love on a screen. And then we also realize that we treat dating now like online shopping where we're like trying to look for the best deal. Uh, Like, what's the best option I have? And then like we actually take good people and uh don't go with them sometimes the more and it's kind of yeah like i say it's become like online shopping you know like you could buy a cheap thing or you could spend a little bit more money up front and you have something that's going to last a little bit longer and we treat everything like that and if you don't understand that you want to pay more up front to get something that lasts a little bit longer that's the thing i've written many songs about it uh my song only one is about online dating uh, on ride or die volume one out now wherever you stream your music at uh but yeah i don't know so you can find success on there people have um but honestly are you able to i know and you're a woman yep uh so i don't know women attraction is different for women like men can be like oh you're hot you're hot you're hot but women attraction is different i guess because you like confidence and shit like that and uh yeah like, women do like confidence. And I'm going to tell you, that's why women keep dating narcissists, because narcissists are confident. And so I always suggest to women who are like, I don't know why I, get, I can't find a good man. Look, find a fucking loser that you don't think is ugly. Uh, and then boost their confidence. And then you're going to be in a really good relationship, ladies. It's not going to be me, though. I'm fine on my confidence. I know who I am. And I like, and I'm fine with who I am. It's taking a while to get there, but I, you know, I've had to, had to work on it, but uh, yeah, I'm fine with who I am, and uh, it's like one of those things like, oh, I need to lose weight. Do I want to lose weight to try to get pussy, or do I want to lose weight for myself? And like, for me, it's like, if I want to lose weight, I'm going to lose weight for myself. I'm not going to lose it for anyone, for any other reason. You just got to, like, you know what? This is not a body I like being in. I want to lose a couple pounds. I'm going to be more comfortable in my body. It's like that situation. So, it looks like everything crashed, but I'm back uh, now, which is nothing to you, because this is post-production editing. Uh, but I think I'm done talking about Tinder. Um, let's just move on to our next one. My friend asked me to send him pictures of my feed. How do I react to this? Fucking TJ Marr of Ghost Town Remedy. 
doing his shit again. Uh, him and me have been mostly online friends for about three months. We generally get along surprisingly well and have been spending a lot of time online together. Uh, so today he was pretty depressed and I tried to cheer him up and just texted him a lot, which seemed to help. But then he asked me if I would send him pictures on my feed. I was super weirded out by this and have since then avoided contact. I absolutely don't know what this means for me is ta tasking tasking for feet pics usually something sexual it feels pretty inappropriate and objectifying but on the other hand he is usually a pretty progressive and feminist dude and it just was just a question i feel so weird and confused how do i best deal with this oh congratulations you played yourself Okay, how do I how do I solve your problem? Um, well, you don't have to send him a picture of your feet. If he if you'd want to, make him pay for that shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess you haven't talked to him since then. Uh, that's how you ruin a friendship. If it's just friendship, don't ask for pictures of feet. So uh, he's kind of at the wrong here. Um, but yeah, definitely is a sexual thing. Why men go out of their way to get pictures of women's feet is beyond me. That is, that is beyond me. I don't even know. See, if I was going to pay money for anything like remotely sexual, I'd be paying for the actual sex. I don't want to pay for like pictures of shit or whatever. I'd rather like, I'd rather pay for a hooker or whatever. And then like have them just fucking, we go to town on each other. I'm a good old, good old time. Um, but yeah, no, in, in regards to the feet pictures, um, I don't know if he really is objectifying you. See, I don't know. See, you can respect a woman, but still kind of want to jerk off and have sex with them. It's that kind of situation. Look, I have friends that are women that look, I'm not, going out of my way to try and have sex with them. That's just, like, that's the type of thing. However, though, if they offered, it'd be a definite yes for me. But, uh, but I still want to respect them and make sure they're safe and shit like that. I don't want to be that guy. Um, in this situation, like, he probably, it's probably one of those, like, hey, you know what would make me feel better? I want to see you naked. But he's also like, I respect you still. Like, you can respect someone and want to see someone naked. That, that's the situation I see here. Like, it, like, and that's why, that's why I kind of get annoyed with people, like, who really disrespect, like, porn industry actors. I'm like, there are people, too, and you should still try to respect them as human beings and treat them like human beings. Like, a lot of times you see someone's in porn and you're just kind of like, oh, my God, they're, I can't believe they ruined their life by doing porn. Like, they didn't ruin their fucking life. They're doing a job that you, that you partake in, basically. Like, you, everyone looks at porn, everyone looks at sex and shit like that, and it's like, Oh, it, it, I can't believe you do that. I can't believe you would do that to your body and shit like that. Like, bitch, calm the fuck down. You look at porn. Stop disrespecting the porn actresses and shit like that. Stop, and the guys, too. Like, you, you, and you hear a lot of them. They're like, thank you for actually, like, respecting our jobs and shit like that. Like, you'll hear them say that shit. Like, it's... I don't know. It, it, it gets kind of depressing, but, you know, with porn, it's like, as long as they're safe and it's not, like grooming and like that bad shit you know the bad shit i'm talking about but if it's like their choice you know they're in charge and shit like that i mean like i don't know why we're having a problem with that anyways though um if you're gonna send a picture of your feet at least have them pay you money for it that's at the end of the day have them pay money for that shit um, all right, we got two more questions here. We're almost done, folks. Uh, I can't get a firm erection ever since I started feeling self-conscious about my private size. I was in a very sexual and toxic relationship for a couple of years ever since we broke up, and I haven't had a strong erection like I used to. I think it's partially because I secretly feel ashamed of the size of my privates, which makes me feel less confident in bed. From what I understand is that I'm not a bad lover, so I just want to be back to normal. Tried watching porn, and I hooked up with a girl but to no avail. I think about this obsessively every day and I need to move on with my life. Any help as to why this is happening and if there are solutions would be much appreciated. So, um, I'm not a doctor, um, but, you know, I'm going to pretend to be one right now. Um, so, typically with erectile dysfunction, from what I know about erectile dysfunction, is that 
with guys, a lot of times it can be a check engine light for just a man. Um, uh, basically that's it. Now I take heavy antidepressants, so it kind of, it can take me a little bit to get it up. But, uh, so I kind of understand your situation, but I, my libido, I don't know. We're not the same, but I get you. I get you, buddy. So I'm not shaming you at all in regards to this situation. Um, so it sounds like to me it's all mental in regards to your, um, to this thing that, so it's all like a mental thing. So you're going to have to work that out either you by yourself or with a therapist or with drugs and alcohol like I do. Um, what you can do in the meantime, I would say, just just get boner pills. Look, we shame, I don't know why we shame like Viagra and shit like that. Why do we shame that shit? It's like, you know, you're not a, you're not a teenager anymore. Like I'm almost in my thirties. Like I were, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't just, I don't get like a brush of wind and then an erection comes my way. Like it, it doesn't work like that anymore. It, even like we shame that shit for some reason. I don't know why we shame erectile dysfunction for so much. Like, I mean, obviously if it's, if you, if it's happening for any reason, it feels like yours is psychological. But a lot of times like guys have it, go to a doctor, get some lab tests done, see if there's anything wrong. That's why I think if you actually do have erectile dysfunction, if not, you're probably just getting older and or shit like that. You know, I mean, like I, I'm happy to admit, like, yeah, mine's not as it takes me a little bit of work for me. I take antidepressants, so like it's not it's not all rainbows for me, folks. And if it's not all rainbows for me, it definitely can't be all rainbows for you. That's not how life works. I'm more important than everyone in your life. So stop feeling actual shame. If you're ashamed of your penis, and, and honestly, buddy, I'm gonna be honest with you. Most women don't care about your penis size. Uh, I've been, you know, with the, I mean, not to like burden, like I have sex, but, you know, and th- maybe here's a shout out to all the women out there. Um, when you get with a guy, do it a couple, one girl did to me and I made me feel okay about my life. Uh, when you're getting ready for work and you're ready to go, go full throttle. This is the type of guy you get. Um, just be like, this will, man, this will be good. Man, this is great. Just say, just, just compliment the penis, okay? Just compliment the penis. Men are way too overreactive about their penis size, so. Uh, but at the end of the day, most women don't care. Some do. Uh, those are the actual ones you want to stay away from because that means they've seen a lot in father figure but they all want sex uh, before i start yes i'm in therapy and i also went to many therapists in my life but nothing changed please read all thank you i have daddy issues and i keep seeking a father figure i also seek men who are older than me around the age of 25 to 35 and i want them to be like a father to me cuddle be caring pat my head watch movies with me go shopping have fun conversations and more i don't know why but my mother or friends don't do it for me it has to be a man who cares a lot about me take care of me when i don't feel good cuddle me and all that stuff problem is that they expect something sexual in return even the ones who were nice first suddenly asked for something sexual when i said no sex to said no to sex they asked for a hand job or nudes i don't want that i just want a man who buys a big teddy bear for me snuggle me tell me that everything is fine and take care of me but they all just want sex i don't want anything sexual with them no i need to give up to find a man like do i need to give up finding a man like this and oh and don't tell me not to look for a father figure that's rough buddy oh my god Oh, my God. This is worse than I thought it would be. Look, if you have father problems, a lot of people do, but you can't expect some random-ass man to fill that void because the way you want him to treat you, I mean, like a father to a daughter, and in normal situations, fathers don't, fathers don't want to have sex with their daughters. I, why am, what am I doing here? Am I having an existential crisis right now on this podcast? People, for real, you're, you're getting these guys all riled up. Everything you're describing, <sighs> this broke me more than I wanted it to. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to say in this situation is that, um, Stop expecting another man to be your father. You only really have one. 
Maybe if you have a stepdad at the same time, but it doesn't look like you do have a father figure, you do have dad issues, make sure your therapist knows about this. Um, but yeah, I am going to tell you, stop looking for a father figure because you're too old for that. And uh, any guy you're trying to make look for a father figure, I will be your father figure. Put your tiny hand in mine. I will be your preacher, teacher, anything you can design. That's all I'm going to say here. Like, you're not going to get a father figure. You're just going to have to give up on that. And uh, stop. And you're looking for men 25 to 35 in year 20? Bro. Bro. Congratulations. You played yourself. Yeah, any person you want to do any of that shit with you is going to want to have sex. That's why we do. That's why foreplay exists. Because we use foreplay because you like it. Then we get to have sex. And we like it. That's how life works. It's a give and take and we all respect each other and we want each other to feel safe and we're still going doing our plan uh i haven't talked about it in a while but we do do a weekly uh contest every week or a challenge the no sexual assault challenge we we do it every week uh, and every week we don't sexually assault anyone and uh i i'm not i hope you all are keeping up too but i just want to remind of ourselves of our no sexual assault challenge where we don't sexually assault anyone and yeah uh don't look for a father figure in another man because they're only going to want sex and don't act surprised otherwise and with that being said let's end the show today thank you for listening to daddy's episode of cancel Sweezy. it's been a whirlwind of an episode ending on just me wanting to shoot myself in the brain uh if you have questions comments or concerns you can always email the schwedcast at gmail.com or hit me up on any social media website it's going to be at the Sweezy everywhere and by everywhere i mean everywhere i'm on all of them even tiktok even on Instagram, even on Facebook. I know old people are on Facebook too. But you can also check out my music. Ride or Die Volume 2 is a month old and out now, so go stream that wherever you stream your music. Um, you can also check us out on Twitch. If you have Twitch Prime uh, with your Amazon account, connect to help us by keeping $5 out of Jeff Bezos, the penis rocket launcher's uh, hands. And uh, if you're watching the show on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment, and uh, if you're listening to audio, leave a review, subscribe to the show, and uh, if you are on, if you want to support the show on Patreon, there's a great way to financially support us, and a great way to say thank you for being a friend. So with all that being said, thank you so much for uh, listening to today's WAP, Daddy Loves You. Honk if you love butt drugs, and stay awesome! Hashtag pray for Micah. Hey, you just finished a full episode of Cancel Sweezy. Thank you so much for uh, finishing the full episode. You made it this far, and I am super proud of you. Uh, if you want to support the show even further, we do have a Patreon page where you can financially support the show, keep us going financially, and uh, being one of the top-ranking Schwoke Lords that I know that you can be. And uh, thank you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe this video if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Thank you so much. And, uh, like I said before, stay awesome.